April G showers back at y'all with the answers to y'all's questions. I am so sorry it's taken me this long, but as most of you know, I've had a whole lot going on. NF dropped a new album. I still gotta react to one song that I haven't reacted to yet off of it. Just been a lot going on, so I do apologize. I've got everyone who asked the questions name in this little cup here. See? And at the end, I'm going to draw three. The first name I draw will be third place. The second name I draw will be second place. The third name I draw will be first place. Third place and second place will get a free priority reaction of your choice. So just comment below in the comments. Don't comment a link. Because YouTube hides comments that have links in them. So comment below the artist and the song title of the reaction you want me to do. If you're second or third place. And then first place will get a free priority reaction. As well as $10 to your PayPal or Cash App or Venmo. And I'm going to mail you something like an 8 by 10 poster of an artist. You'll just have to wait and see who it is when you get it in the mail. Now, the three names that I draw, if y'all don't comment on the video below and let me know y'all's request for y'all's free priority reaction, I'll give y'all like 24 hours and then I'll draw a different name out 24 hours after this video is posted if I don't hear from you. It's a lot of questions. It's probably going to be a long video, so y'all just bear with me. But hey, I think that's a pretty good deal to get prizes just for asking me a question. Come on, bro. Alright, y'all. I appreciate everyone who did ask me a question. As I go through the questions, I'll shout out who asked the question as I go through them. So, alright, y'all. April G. Squad. Fist bump. Love y'all. Let's get it. Got a piece of fun, Zoe. All right. First, we have Max Dickerson. As far as YouTube goes, what has been your most notable takeaway from your YouTube journey? Hmm. By the way, I did not write my answers down or anything. I'm just winging it on one question i had to ask my son a question because they asked the question as it relates to me and as it relates to my son so i did have to think about that question but i didn't have to write it down but i will pull it up on google when i get there and then i had to write down what my son's answer was so my most notable takeaway from my youtube journey my most positive notable takeaway. It's probably two positive ones. Mo you know what I mean. There's a lot of, you know what I mean. The two main ones. My two main positive takeaways from my YouTube journey would be it is never too late to go after your dreams, to try something different, try something new, and you never know what will come of it. When I started this journey, I was 39. It was November of 2019. I had just turned 39 and had been a nurse for over two decades of my life. Never in a million years thought I'd be a YouTuber. I'd have laughed in your face. <laughs> and so the first most positive takeaway is take those leaps of faith. Take risk because you never know. And then my second positive, most positive takeaway would be you never know who's watching you. Like 
I got to interview Tech Nine and Debo from Shoe Gang and Mickey Fax and Kim Vicious and Austin Benjamin and Lex Bratcher and Crip and Saban Savage and so many amazing people, Mises you know, uh, lyrics, so many amazing people, 15 different people I've interviewed so far, Lupe Fiasco shouted me out, I've had several shout outs from pretty big names, and it's very humbling, and a blessing, and just amazing, absolutely amazing, so those are the two most positive takeaways, and then another takeaway, I don't know if it could be positive, depends on how you look at it, is people on the internet, for the most part, aren't who you think they are. I learned that the hard way, and it's difficult because I'm just myself, you know what I mean? So, I just assumed everyone else was their self, you know, and I was so wrong, and I have been hurt very badly, very badly on this platform in this community by several people and so yeah the vast majority not all but the vast majority of people on all these social media platforms are not who you think they are are not who they portray themselves to be in front of the camera and that's just it's just sad and unfortunate but that's is how it is unfortunately and then Matt Stickerson's next question is if there was one thing you could say to us as your YouTube family what would it be thank y'all to my real ones to my loyal people to the people who watch my videos and comment on them and like them who are subscribed and show up to the live streams just to show support all that thank y'all y'all have truly changed my life and there's no way i could ever repay y'all for everything y'all have given to me but i can promise y'all i will forever be me i will never switch up if my channel does grow and get into the bigger numbers i'm not gonna be a different person i'm always gonna be me so and then matt stickerson says what is your most notable takeaway from your journey in life definitely as cliche as it sounds that life is too short i've had so many losses in my life that you just never know and that saying here today gone tomorrow like i i'll say here today gone in 10 minutes like you just never know so it's important to be thankful in the moment cherish the moment cherish your loved ones while you can because you never know life's too short and i'm guilty of not doing that i am human so <laughs> and then matt stickerson said if there was what piece of advice you could offer, what would it be? Obviously, I I, I have to say two things. I, one, don't do drugs or drink. You don't know if you're an addict, alcoholic, unless you do it. So, I, this is what I teach my son. Just don't do it. And then, I, I have more things to say than just to, I will say several things. You said one piece of advice is, is more than that. Don't do drugs or drink. Always be yourself, unapologetically you. The good, the bad, the ugly. To me, it seems like it would be a lot more work to be fake than to just be yourself. And I'll never understand it. <laughs> Like, in the words of an 8-ball and MJG, I can't be nobody but me, and that's all I can be. I can't be who you want me to be, because that ain't me. Y'all don't know nothing about that song. Who knows that song? And what album that song is? Anyway, I still have that CD. And also, again, the whole remember life is too short thing. That would be another piece of advice i would give and then he said if the inevitable were to call your name today how would you hope to be remembered <sighs> so if i die today that's what he's saying how would i want to be remembered 
I would want to be remembered as someone who was always real, unapologetically herself, funny, smart, a good mother, a good friend, a woman of faith, someone who never gave up, and someone who helped and inspired others. Yeah, that's how I'd want to be remembered. And the number one queen of catching bars out of any female I've ever seen in my life, that was the bar queen. And it can't no female catch bars like April G. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Then he said, on a lighter note, do you have any favorite colors, foods, shows, movies, pastimes, rings, jewelry? So, my favorite colors in order are black, red, blue. Favorite foods, nine times out of ten, if it's healthy for you, I don't like it. <laughs> I love homemade lasagna, my mother's. I love chicken and dressing with cranberry sauce, southern homemade chicken and dressing, not stove top stuffing, no, homemade chicken and dressing with cranberry sauce. I love pasta, bread, cheese, all the unhealthy stuff. <laughs> My favorite shows, like TV shows, I watch a lot of true crime. I'm addicted to true crime. Love it. I love The Handmaid's Tale. I love Euphoria, Snowfall, Dexter, Sons of Anarchy, Nurse Jackie. It's so many. My guilty pleasure is reality TV, like Bad Girls Club and the Blue Face Show thing and American Idol, Dancing with the Stars. America's Got Talent, so you think you could dance, like, any type of reality show, contest show, love it. Favorite pastime would be spending time with my son, obviously. Listening to music, writing, watching true crime, I mean, that's basically all I do, so. My favorite rigs, that's very difficult. I have a lot of rigs, and I have, like, about three, three to four hundred, and I'm not exaggerating other rings over there. I love opals. Love opals. My favorite opal is a black opal. An opal is October birthstone. Opal and pink ice is October birthstone. And uh, my birthday is October 10th. But black opals are my favorite. This is a black opal cross necklace. Both of those rings on this finger, <laughs> on this finger right here, are black opals. You see, they vary in color. Uh, I like the one on the bottom. This one better than the one on the top. And then, that's all the black opals I have on right now. This ring right here is my big brother's ashes are in some of his ashes where he was cremated are in this ring it's a heart my left ring finger here i always wear a cross i've got this black one and then i've got like multicolored one and then i i have just a silver one and then right above it i wear a band that says mom and then right above it is a crown and i always wear those three things a cross mom crown on my wedding ring finger. It's the finger you would put an engagement and wedding ring on. I used to wear a black. It's like these are beds right here. Except in ring form. I used to wear that on my wedding ring finger. But it's a vow to God. Hence the cross and the crown. And in the middle says mom. Because my son. It's a vow to God that I will remain celibate unless and until I get married. So, and if I don't get married, then I'll be celibate forever. And I'm cool with that. I've been celibate for six and a half years now. So, 
I'll make you just fine. But this is my favorite ring. I mean, my favorite necklace. The black, my black opal cross. I also love this right here. This rainbow ring. It's one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. So, and then, did I say my favorite movies? I didn't, did I? My favorite movies are, there's a lot. Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. Jagalay, Jagalay, you go eat your cold bread. Hell yeah, you go eat some of the cold bread. <laughs> I love G.I. Jane. I love all the Denzel Washington movies. I love Scarface, Boys in the Hood, Jago, Color Purple, Flight, Friday, Braveheart. We Were Soldiers, Purge, Monster, Natural Born Killers. I mean, I could go on forever. The Notebook, Beaches, My Girl, What's Love Got to Do With It, Walk the Line, Eight Mile Hustle and Flow. I mean, bruh, To Save a Life, Letters to God, My Sister's Keeper, The Shack, Pay It Forward, I'm Not Ashamed. Dawn Anna, it's a lot, bruh, a whole lot. I got movie collection over here and a bunch more over there. Love Disney movies, love musicals, some of them, not all of them. I love Grease, the old school Grease, so yeah. All right, so that's all of Max Dickerson's questions. All right, next question is from the SV. R. Appreciate you, SVR. What was your best memorable moment you ever experienced? I would say New Year's Eve 2014 going into 2015 that night. Me and my little brother and one of his friends and one of my friends went to Nashville to this thing called New Year's Impact. And we got to see a lot of our favorite worship artists like Lecrae, Derek Minor, Matthew West, Jeremy Camp, Big Daddy Weave. Uh, it was a lot. Sidewalk Prophets, Brandon Heath, 10th Avenue North. I mean, it, it was just amazing. Absolutely amazing. We had a wonderful time. And then my most memorable moment I ever experienced on YouTube would be interviewing the number one independent artist and label in the world. And one of my goats, Tech Nine. That was amazing. And then me and my son getting to go to Tech Nine's concert last year in May. And he had made us VIPs. And we had our own little table. He shouted me out during the concert. After the concert was over, the security guard came and got us and said, Tech and I will see y'all in the green room. And my son was freaking out. That was his first concert he's ever been to ever. What a first concert. And Tech and I gave my son one of his shirts one of his Kansas City shirts, and it was just absolutely amazing. And then on Good Friday this year, me and my son got to go to Nashville to meet NF and have him sign our Hope CDs, and that was dope. So, thank you, SVR. Next comes from Nicholas Lindsay. As a huge fan of superhero movies... What would be your superpower of choice and why? And he said his would be telekinesis. My superpower of choice would be the ability to heal the sick. And why? So there would be no sickness. <laughs> that would definitely be my superpower if I could pick. Thank you, Nicholas Lindsay. Next comes from Twisted Psychology Music. What gave you the idea to start your hour with April G. Showers interview series? I really like what you brought with it. Well, first off, thank you. Second off, I had had the idea for at least 
six, seven months, maybe longer than that, before I actually started it and started doing it. I had the idea of doing it and came up with the name and then chickened out because I was scared to ask people to interview them. And finally, I just said, F it and did it. And now I've interviewed 15 amazing people. So my own imagination gave me the idea. I, I don't know how to answer it. Thank you, Twisted Psychology Music. Mr. Recovery, what's been the hardest part or parts of your recovery? Definitely the deaths of my brothers. Trying to stay clean through the deaths of both of my siblings is and was the absolute hardest thing besides watching them take their last breath trying to stay clean through all that pain and grief definitely the hardest thing i've ever had to do besides watching them take their last breath yeah that has got to be the hardest part as far as the hardest part of my recovery like today i don't i don't even know how to answer that because i don't ever crave getting high i don't have any desire to get high i guess you know i do need to work on self-love and learning to love myself and care about myself so yeah i struggle with that a lot thank you mr recovery hold up y'all i gotta put my hoodie on i'm freezing Okay, y'all, sorry. I'm freezing, and I'm stupid. I don't know why I had headphones on. I don't need headphones on for this. So, next question comes from Kevin Richardson. Who inspired you to do reactions on YouTube? No Life Shack. And so far, what's your favorite reaction that you've done on your channel? There is no way I can answer that. I have a lot of favorite reactions. I have, like, as far as a favorite bar breakdown, a favorite funny reaction, a favorite emotional reaction, a favorite hype reaction. It's just, it's so many different ones. Like, my most viewed reaction or reactions are darkness by eminem how could you leave us by nf wishing well by juice world and proof that katie noel is lying <laughs> straight from her mouth <laughs> those are my most viewed videos i think <laughs> but my favorite reaction there's no way i'd have to break it down into categories Thank you, Kevin. LC Music Tracks ask, what are your aspirations for this year? I would love to be able to hit at least twenty-five to 30,000 subscribers, but I know that's not going to happen, but that would be dope. I would love to get to monetization status. On TikTok, I'm almost there. Um, I got the follower count and all that. I just need the views. The way the guidelines to be able to be monetized, the view count is ridiculous. But anyway, and I would love to be able to officially release my own song, preferably my song called Pain Music, and I want to release it on all streaming platforms. But so many people have said they're going to mix and master it, and then I don't hear nothing else from them. Yeah, that answers that one. Okay, next question comes from KC Ville. What is something you've done that was worth it to you? Quit community college when I was almost 19 and went to LPN school, nursing school, and graduated there when I was 20 and became a charge nurse at 20 years old and I would worked in the medical field for over two decades before I went to LPN school I was a CNA certified nursing assistant and I did that for four years that was my after school job when I was a junior and senior in high school and I absolutely loved nursing and miss it every single day of my life and then obviously having my son. 
And then what is something you regret in your life? That's a tough one. Something I regret. It's difficult because it's like the things you would think I would say, like becoming addicted to pills and things like that. Everything I've gone through has made me who I am today. So it's like the things I regret made me who I am today. So it's hard to answer that question. And that's like I regret breaking up with the one good guy that I was in a relationship with that didn't cheat on me or anything. But then, see, if I'd have stayed with him, I wouldn't have my son Jackson. So <laughs> it's crazy how that works. I guess my biggest regret in life would be thinking people online are my friends when they're really not, you know? I mean, when somebody tells me I'm their sister, I'm like their family, they got my back, they love me, I consider that a friend, and I learned the hard way that that's not the case in most cases, and I've been very hurt, and so that's probably my biggest regret, is allowing people to hurt me like I have in this community and getting close to people or thinking I'm close to people when I'm really not. So thank you, Casey Veal. Next question comes from Finding Lost Verses, who's also a reaction channel. Do you plan on rapping on any cipher in if the opportunity exists? I've been in one cipher that was the ENC cipher 4. Shout out to Reactor ENC, the only person to have ever given me a chance to rap in a cipher. I appreciate it. Um, I've got the highlights of it up on my channel. If y'all are interested in watching it, yeah, I would I'm definitely down to be in a cipher. Definitely down. Um, I just, you know, I don't think I'm good enough rap wise now i'm very confident in my writing but my rapping i don't think i'm good enough to be in any type of like song like do a collab with somebody or be in like a youtube cypher or anything and that's why i'm so grateful to reactor enc for giving me that opportunity and that chance thank you finding lost verses next question comes from official phoenix did you play any sports growing up if so, which ones? So, when I still lived in Alabama as a little bitty girl, I took roller skating lessons and roller skated a lot. And I took bowling lessons and I was in the bowling league uh, in elementary school, junior high, high school. And I was a cheerleader in elementary school, junior high, high school. And I was in gymnastics for a little while, but my mom made me quit because she worked full time and didn't want to have to take me to the practices after school and stuff and after she got off work every day. So that was temporary. And then let's see, I love ping pong. I never was in a league or anything like that, but I love playing ping pong. So yeah, thank you, Official Phoenix. Devo the Ambivert, another great reaction channel. Check him out. If you could fly, where would you go and why? I would definitely go to heaven. And why? To see Jesus and my siblings and my best friend and my grandfather and my grandmother and so many other people I've lost. So, thank you, Devo. Kai Klutz with these damn crazy questions. What is truth? <laughs> the opposite of false. It means something is a fact. It is the truth. You cannot disprove it because it is the truth. And there's a difference in the truth and your truth. Everyone can have their own version of a truth. There are some things that are just the truth. And you can't argue with facts that are the truth. What is reality? Well, I'm sitting in it right now. I'm sitting in reality right now. In the moment. In my room. Sitting in my recliner. My bed's right here to the left. 
this is my reality right now. I think the moment, living in the moment is reality. Definitely what you see on social media, most of what you see on social media ain't reality at all. Just like reality TV ain't really reality TV. Most of it's scripted. So, yeah. Then this mug asks, what is life? Well, if we're talking the literal sense, it's the condition that differentiates animals and plants from materials that isn't a plant or animal, like the ability to grow and reproduce and change over time and then die. Like, and then if you want to go like the another way with the question, what is life? I think it is what you make it. Even though there are things that happen to us that we have no control over, you have full control over your actions and reactions to everything. Just like, say people won't leave you alone on the internet, just block them. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Next question from Kyle Clutch, do we have free will? Yes, absolutely. The Bible says so, and I'm a believer in the Bible, so. Kyle Clutch's next question, is the universe deterministic? No, it's not. I don't call it the universe. I don't think the universe, which is the planets and space and everything, the universe is comprised of makes humans do things i believe in god and god gives us all free will however i do believe everything happens for a reason i do believe that i believe if you're going down the road you have a flat tire that that happened for a reason maybe if you would have kept going and not had the flat tire you could have been in a wreck and died so you know I don't think the universe is deterministic. And then Kyle's last question. What comes after humans? Nothing. Jesus will be coming back for the second time. First, in my beliefs, the rapture is going to happen. And those who are saved will be raptured off of this earth. After that, the people who are left on the earth will go through seven years of the trials of tribulation. At the end of that seven years, the people who got saved and turned their life over to God, over to Jesus, will go to heaven, and the other ones will go to hell, and everything will be gone. So yeah, that's how I look at it. I think we'll all be in heaven and perfect bodies as far as no longer sick no longer in pain no longer struggling you know things of that nature so the next question comes from stan mason do you have any hobbies besides writing or music <laughs> watching true crime i collect the funko pops as y'all can see up there on my walls you see all the funko pops and that's not even all of them. Let me take the camera down and I'll show y'all. I've got up there are the horror movie and villain Funko Pops and Batman, Joker. I got Scarface up there, Tony Montana. Then over there, I've got all my favorite Funko Pops because my bed used to be over there. And those two sets of Funko Pops and that music sign in the middle used to be what was in the background of my videos. So we've got to switch them all around. And then on that wall, that's the wall dedicated to both of my brothers. On the left is The Lion King. My little brother loved The Lion King. Made me watch it a billion times. On the right is Toy Story. He loved Toy Story as well. And at the top right is Albert Einstein. And then if you look to the right of it there's a picture of albert einstein holding a calculator and it says e equals mc squared on that calculator my big brother drew that picture underneath that is an essay my little brother wrote 
about me when he was in sixth grade. That cross there in the middle of the Funko Pops was at my little brother's funeral. On the left side is my little brother's obituary. I actually made it. In the middle is a plaque that my little brother called me Sissy or a Bible verse at the top, a message from him at the bottom, and then a cross. And then over there on my dresser is the Home Alone. And on top of Home Alone is Nightmare Before Christmas. And then over there, there's a Nurse Funko Pop on that other dresser. And then over there, right there, are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Golden Girls and Danny Zuko and no, no, they're over there. The last one's over there. Johnny and Baby from Dirty Dancing and Danny and Sandy from Grease are right there above NF poster. So over here is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Spider-Man, uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, and yeah. So, and then right there on my bed, <laughs> my sheet fell off my bed there, but right there on my bed, um, my friend Sandy, who I used to work with, we've been friends for decades, had me custom made a Tech 9 Funko Pop and the Eminem Recovery and Eminem, the Eminem Show album Funko Pop. And then she said there's two more on the way, but wouldn't tell me what they are, so yeah. <laughs> so I'm a huge collector of Funko Pops. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Hobbies besides writing music, obviously, my Funko Pop collection, my jewelry, I collect jewelry. Now I'm picky about jewelry. I really don't wear gold hardly ever. Always silver, black. I like stud earrings. I have two earring holes in each ear. And I like the stud earrings. I like no bigger than 8 millimeters in diameter studs for the bottom hole. And then the hole above it, no bigger than 6 millimeters. So, I'm just weird. I hate uh, earrings that dangle. I don't like that. I don't like big, huge, gaudy necklaces. I just like simple necklaces with a little simple charm. And then I absolutely love rings. I wear a lot of rings. On my left hand, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 rings on my left hand. And there's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 rings on my right hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess you could say that's a hobby. <laughs> I watch true crime all the time. And, yeah. Okay, next came from Sidem. When did you feel like doing reactions was what you wanted to do full time? When I had to quit nursing in 2018, and then I lost my home, and then me and my son had to move in with my mom in July 2019, I stayed isolated in my bedroom. I hated my life and myself, and I would isolate in the bedroom there and binge watch YouTube. And I was binge watching Eminem interviews and concerts. <laughs> And No Life Shack popped up in my recommended. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? But I clicked on it because it said Eminem. And laughed my ass off. Loved it. And like binge watched Shaq's react reactions. And then by watching so much No Life Shack, script work popped up in my recommended. Marcus and Lim from script work. The dads. And I started watching them, and they really, and Shaq used to break down bars a whole lot more than he, and more in depth than he does now, but script work really broke bars down, and as I watched Shaq and I watched script work, the thought would go through my brain, I could do that, and then it would quickly go away, like, uh, no, look how old you are, look how ugly you are, look at your teeth, look at your weight, look at, you know, and then script work was live streaming one night, November 9th, 2019, I didn't even know what live meant, 
but I clicked on it and I saw the chat going and the dads Marcus and Liam script work sitting there on their little couch slash love seat thing at that time I was just April G just a viewer and I said what's up this is my first live or something like that and then Marcus and Liam from script work were like what up April G and I was like holy hell they just talked to me <laughs> what's going on and i thought that was cool and that chat was super dope that night and i stayed there the whole time for like hours and i got comfortable when i finally hesitantly said i'm thinking about starting my own reaction channel but very hesitant and mark either marcus or Lim one said shit april g ain't nothing to it but to do it and then the whole live chat was like Oh, you got to. We need more female bar catchers. We need more female bar catchers. You have to do it. And that motivated me. And that's why I say No Life Shack was my inspiration for starting my channel. And Script Work was my motivation for starting my channel. And then the very next morning when I got up, I started my channel. November 10th, 2019. So, yeah. And then when I started started my channel i knew i was gonna be doing it full time because i couldn't physically work because of my health and i love doing it and it when i started my channel i didn't even know you could be monetized on youtube and then when i found out you could i just saw that as a blessing and yeah here i am three and a half years later it's crazy saddam also says what bar is the most relatable to you and what bar is the most relatable to Jackson? So, I asked Jackson, and his answer was a bar from the song Money Game Part 2 by Wren. I still have not heard that song. I have to react to Money Game Part 1 and 2. I'm going to do those together. But anyway, it's a bar from that song. And he says, money is the game, and the ladder we climb. Turn the saint into a sinner with his finger in crime. So that's the bar Jackson picked for himself saying he liked it because it's like saying money isn't everything. It's like the root of all evil and it turns saints into sinners with their hands in crime, you know, or fingers in crime, you know. So that's the bar he picked. And then mine comes from the song Remember This by nf and it is i feel that life's too short don't let it pass you by we waste a lot of time crying over wasted time it's not about what people think it's how you feel inside my biggest failures in life are knowing i never try i look at the world from a different angle people change even satan used to be an angel Think twice before you biting on the hand that made you. Don't believe what you believe just because that's how they raised you. Think your own thoughts. Don't let them do it for you. Say you want a drink. Don't wait for people to pour it on you. Stay close to the people you know are loyal. Grab your glass and fill it. Don't let your fear destroy you. Woo! <laughs> so that's my favorite. Sorry, y'all, I'm very tired. I had a treatment this morning, and he gave me a bigger dosage of heparin, and I haven't had hardly any sleep, and I'm supposed to get another treatment Monday, and I don't know how I'm going to do that, but it's in God's hands, you know? All right, and then realistically, what big artist do you think you'll interview next, and which one would you like to interview? I have no idea what big artist I'll interview next. No clue because a couple have told me they would, but when I ask them when they're available, they ignore me. So I have no idea who will be next. And I would love to be able to interview Lupe Fiasco or Eminem. Lupe, I did send him a DM on Instagram asking him to be able to interview him. He did see it, but he didn't respond. So, uh, and I, I get it. I get it. I mean, I'm a nobody and they're them. So I understand. But yeah. Thank you, Sidem. The next question comes from Money Mike, the Wolfmaster. 
what made you decide to make a channel breaking down bars like i said earlier i found no live shack he broke down bars a lot more back then than he does now and then that led me to script work who really does in-depth bar breakdowns and that made me want to do it too so i've always loved words vocabulary metaphors similes entendres all that stuff so steve 30 <laughs> asked what's my favorite song by april g <laughs> change my mind <laughs> Even though I, the writing is great, but the rapping sucks. <laughs> but thank you, Steve 30 Next question comes from Zanon Hamish. If I could give you my life slash health, would you take it willingly? I would give it if it was possible. I'm just a janitor. My life means very little to me right now. No, Zanon, I would never take your life or your health or anybody else's for that matter that would just be wrong on every level and don't say your life means very little because at least you have a job a good paying job decent paying job you know could be a lot worse that's what i tell myself when i'm feeling bad or depressed or in a dark place that it could always be worse so but thank you zan and hamish that's very nice next questions come from wendy raymond who would you most like to meet besides eminem and lupe well i met tit nine i met nf i would like to meet nf though where we could actually sit down and talk to him you know what i mean so yeah it would probably be nf because literally literally all he did was sign our cds say a couple words and we left so i would like to be able to talk to him then she says if you could be an animal which animal would you choose i would want to be a little bitty house dog like gracie it weigh three pounds when i'm 77 because she just turned 77 the other day well 11 but you know but yeah i'd like to be a small house dog like that spoiled and if you could choose to go back in time to an era what era would you choose era 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 um i would go back to any of the years that my little brother was still alive except from august 2014 to may 24 2015 when he died except for that period of time of his life i would want to go back any time during his life before august of 2014 because he was my best friend i could talk to him about anything trust him with a hundred percent anything and never had to worry about him telling anybody i miss him very much thank you wendy next is j law what was the leading cause of the american civil war hint it's not slavery <laughs> obviously it's the economic practices uh let's see what else does it say economic policies and practices cultural values the extent and reach of the federal government and the role of slavery within american society so and then last question 100 percent beef said if it wasn't for music what type of channel would you have I actually started a second channel called April G. Reigns, R-E-I-G-N-S. That's a double entendre. If you get the double entendre, comment it down below. And I plan on sometime when I have the time, I want to do everything I love besides music. I'm sure I'll sprinkle a little bit of music over there from time to time like I do on my TikTok. But I want to do uh, true crime stuff, definitely, definitely. I want to live stream different trials, uh, comedy. I want it to be about recovery, addiction, alcoholism, mental illness, mental health awareness grief all the stuff i love except music pretty much and hopefully one of these days i'll get the time to start posting content consistently and regularly over there so yeah 
So thank you all so much for the amazing questions. I appreciate y'all. Now it's time to see who the winners are. The first name I draw is third place. The second name I draw is second place. And the third name I draw is first place. Second and third place will get a free priority reaction. First place will get a free priority reaction. $10 and I'll mail you an 8x10 poster of an artist. But I do need the three people's names that I draw. I need y'all to comment below in the comments the song title and the artist's name of the reaction, priority reaction you want me to do. If I don't see your comment within the next 24 hours, I'll draw a different name to take your place. So I hope to see all three of y'all's comments. Now, as far as the first place winner who will be getting $10 and 8x10 poster mailed to them, I'll need you to DM me on Twitter or Instagram. I'm April G underscore showers on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. So just DM me on follow me and then DM me on one of those platforms. And I'll need you to DM me either your Cash App tag, your PayPal, or your Venmo as well as your first and last name and your address and it will always and forever stay between us no one will ever 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 know it i promise i would never do that i would never dox anybody i think that's completely wrong all right y'all here we go third place the winner of a free priority reaction is official phoenix official phoenix so official phoenix comment down below the song title and artist of the reaction you want me to do now y'all give me time to do these reactions because there's a lot of reactions on my priority request list and i have to record them edit them upload them make thumbnails so just bear with me give me time so congrats to official phoenix third place Second place is Twisted Psychology Music. Twisted Psychology Music. So Twisted Psychology Music, if you'll comment below the song title and the artist's name for your free priority request. Congrats, Twisted Psychology Music, for getting second place. And now our champion, the winner is, let's see who it's going to be champion kyle klutz kyle klutz you are the first place winner the champion so kyle klutz i want you to comment below the artist's name and song title that you want me to do a reaction to i want you to dm me let me know your first last name your address and i've got your cash app so the money is coming from my cousin, and she is working all weekend, so the people who win money prizes on this, and then when I do the video where I rap the song with the words that y'all gave me, the winner of that who wins $5, I will send the money to y'all as soon as I get in touch with my cousin. She works all weekend. She works at the hospital, so... It will either be sent to y'all on Sunday or Monday, but it will be sent to y'all, and I will be mailing out the 8x10 posters Monday or Tuesday as well. I still got to mail the winner of the trivia that we did Friday night. I got to mail that CD Monday or Tuesday as well. So, Kyle Klutz, first place. Twisted Psychology Music, second place. Official Phoenix, third place. Y'all got 24 hours to comment below. A song title and artist's name of the reaction y'all want me to do. If y'all don't comment, I will draw a different name out of this cup. I'm going to put the cup right over here so I don't lose it. And I'm taking y'all's names out of it so I don't redraw y'all's names. So yeah, and shout out to everyone else who gave me questions. I appreciate y'all so very much. I'm very grateful for my channel. I know I get in these moods. I'm human like everyone else. 
but I'm never going to give up, and I'm very grateful to everyone who has helped me in any way, shape, or form, and yeah, please pray for me. I'm supposed to get another treatment Monday, and I don't have any of the money to get the treatment Monday. So, somebody did donate some money to my GoFundMe, but I won't get it till Wednesday or Thursday. So, so yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and yeah, y'all, thank y'all, April G. Squad, fist bump, love y'all, and I'll see y'all in just a little bit. Peace out.